event that happened yesterday uh, actually started several months ago. The security concerns that they had was because of, of the top event and the speaker that they were having and issues that had been uh, with those folks before. A spokesman for the Garland Police Department commenting after that Texas shooting that left two gunmen dead and an officer injured. Those two gunmen opened fire outside of a Draw Muhammad contest. Officials now believe that one of the shooters, identified as Elton Simpson, pledged allegiance to ISIS shortly before the attacks. And according to reports, Elton Simpson also the subject of a previous FBI terror investigation. The other man killed was Simpson's Phoenix roommate, Nadir Sofi. Apparently, these two traveled from Arizona to Texas to mount this attack. For more on this, let's go now to Phoenix, Arizona via Skype and welcome in Dr. Zudi Jasser, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and the author of the book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. And for purposes of full disclosure, Zudi is also my personal physician. So doc, uh, here is Elton Simpson who recently pledged allegiance to ISIS. Now, I don't know if you had heard this guy's name or not before in Phoenix. Did you have any knowledge of this man? No, I've never heard of him. But, you know, uh, for those of us active in counter-radicalism and counter-Islamism, uh, I've certainly been threatened by various ISIS members that I know were here in Arizona because one of them back in November threatened to come and put the ISIS flag on my face. Uh, didn't threaten violence, but it sounded like violence to me. So... They're here, we know they're active, and uh, that allegiance that he swore to was part of the Islamo-patriotic movement, uh, which is ISIS or any Islamic state. Well, now you mentioned this, Zudi, and uh, in your mind, you're getting these, these uh, social comments from those who uh, at least uh, disagree with you. Do you fear that one day, God forbid, they might take action against you? Well, I think, you know, this is the fear that any of us have when you uh, get out in the public eye. And I think Americans, if there's anything you learn from what happened in Garland, when you ask where are the moderate Muslim voices, I mean, they this is what happens to people that speak out. Now, granted, uh, the, this group was much more provocative, and I think I'm much less as somebody who loves my faith. But, you know, they learned, the, the ISIS radicals learned this from Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and, and Iran, where Muslims like myself get treated as called apostates and and blasphemers. So whether we're heretics or infidels, there's really no difference to the government or to these theocrats, which this radical is. So we, we're smart when we, you know, in what we do. I report it to the authorities when I feel threatened. Uh, but I do think it would be, I hope the Bureau and others learn something from this and that, you know, they had good security in Garland. And sometimes you wonder how much these folks are, you know, what are these two individuals here in Phoenix being followed and monitored? And you know, I found their Twitter feed pretty quick last night as I searched the hashtag Texas attack. And I don't know that their accounts have been, you know, they were closed pretty quick after. They probably should have been closed weeks ago. Well, let me ask you about that, quote, draw Muhammad event and the whole notion of, of uh, any representation of the prophet Muhammad. You are Muslim. Is it an insult to have any image of the prophet? Well, I mean, it, it certainly violates my own, you know, sensibilities of a faith that I love, but it is absurd to think that Muslims should uh, um, react in any way but to just ignore it. I mean, from if you look at blasphemy, really, re really atheism and rejecting God is a much bigger sin in Islam than criticizing the Prophet Muhammad. So the reason these guys glob on to that is because that's the only thing Muslims have unique to us is the Prophet Muhammad. And they don't care about atheists and those who criticize God and blaspheme against God because we share that God with Judaism and Christianity. So what they're doing is it's all about Islamo-nationalism. They want to use the Muhammad idea as a flag, just like we would get upset if somebody burned our flag. They get upset if there's a cartoon or a caricature of the leader of our faith, even though I think it runs against everything that my faith stands for. So their Islam is a theocratic, suppressive, oppressive uh, a movement. Zudi, about a minute remains. In, in your opinion, was that Draw Muhammad event in Garland, Texas, meant to be provocative or to provoke some sort of response? 
Well, I mean, was Charlie Hebdo's cartoons provocative? Uh, you know, this is, you know, the New York Times even said after Charlie Hebdo in January that the blasphemy we need are the ones that are provocative because the ones that aren't don't really challenge our liberalism and our freedom. So maybe it was, but there's no moral equivalency between, you know, what I do is provocative to them also, and I love my faith. So, you know, what's provocative one day will not be in another week. And they'll find something else in order to suppress any criticism and critique for reform. Dr. Zudi Jasser, we very much appreciate your time here and your first appearance on our new primetime program, Newsmax Prime. We should also point out that Zudi, again, is the author of this book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, An American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. Our thanks to Dr. M. Zudi Jasser, and here's how you can get in touch with us as you take a look at the screen, email, Facebook, and Twitter, and we're coming back.